Hello, welcome back. We're going to be talking about material balances in reactive systems. Remember that the general equation for the material balance states that inputs minus outputs plus production minus consumption is going to be equal to accumulation. And it's a result of the mass conservation principle. Now in the steady state, inputs plus production equals output plus consumption, which means that the accumulation terms cancel. Production is focused on products and consumption is for reactants. And two methods can be discussed. The one of the extent of the reaction and atomic balance. There is a third method, but I usually don't use it because it's more complicated. Extent of reaction is the amount of moles or molar flow rate of the species converted in a reaction divided by the species stoichiometric coefficient. This is the symbol that we're using for the extent of reaction. Um, for the system that has a single reaction, it is defined for the limiting reactant and the fractional conversion as the amount of mole consumed of the limiting reactant over the stoichiometric coefficient of the limiting reactant. This is F, the uh, fractional conversion, times the number of moles of the limiting reactants that are going to enter the system over this coefficient of the limiting reactant. And with this technology of reaction, the final moles of each active uh, reactive species, reactants and products of the stoichiometric equation will be n final equals n initial plus this stoichiometric coefficient times the extent of reaction. This is not varying, although these three terms are varying, this is common for all the species. As an example, and let's remember our example where you feed 150 moles of SO2, 100 moles of oxygen, and the 376 moles of this inner gas, which is N2, with this reaction. Um, for the conversion of 70% of the limiting reactant, where the limiting reactant, remember, was SO2, you can see this in the previous video, then the extent of the reaction is going to be equal to 0.70, times the inlet of the limiting reactant, which is 150, over the stoichiometric coefficient, which is 2. This yields to 52.5 moles. And now that we have this list of components, we have SO2, O2, SO3, N2, and the total, we can yield, uh, put this table as initial moles 150 for SO2, 100 for O2. We don't actually feed anything of SO3 and 376 of N2, we can sum this up to yield 626. The stoichiometric coefficient, here the sign is going to be important, is going to be negative for the reactants, minus 2 for SO2, minus 1 for oxygen, and it's going to be positive for the product. Uh, this uh, inert gas does not apply, and if you sum minus 2 minus 1 plus 2, it yields to a total of minus 1. The number of final moles is going to be equal to the number of initial moles plus its stoichiometric coefficient times the extent of the reaction, 150 minus 2 uh, times 52.5, 100 minus 1 times 52.5, 0 plus 2 times 52.5, here 376, the rest uh, of the expression can be ignored, here inputs equal outputs, and 626 minus 1, this is the minus 1, times 52.5, so it yields to 45, 47.5, 105, 376, if you add this up, this will yield to 573.5, which is the same as this balance. And if you go for atomic balance, atoms are not generated, they are not consumed either. So in the steady state, inputs equals outputs. Whatever enters the system as an atom will have to go out in any given form. So you must obtain the number of moles per atom in a molecule with the stoichiometric ratio. For instance, you know that each mole of SO2 has two moles of O, or one mole of S, right? You just have one of these, two of these, right? So in our same example, well, we can start 
uh, by obtaining the number of moles that go out of the N of the SO2 by uh, obtaining this expression of the fractional conversion, this yields to 45 moles of SO2. Now this was already done once again in the previous video, so you can go there to see this explanation. Once you have this, then you can do a balance of on, on sulfur inputs equals outputs. You are going to input SO2 and one mole of S is going to be one mole of SO2. And this is going to be equal to the amount of moles that they are going to go out of SO2 with the one mole of S is one mole of SO2, this is stoichiometric ratio, and the amount of moles that are going to go out of SO3, one mole of S is one mole of SO3. And at the very end, you already have this 150, you have 45 here, so 150 times one over one is 150, 45, one over one, 45, and then you can work for the number of moles of SO3, yielding to the 105 moles of SO3, 150 minus 45. And here you can do the balance of oxygen as well. It is a, bit, a little bit more complex because uh, you have more oxygen species. So inputs equals outputs, the amount of moles that you're going to feed of SO2 times this stoichiometric ratio to mole of oxygen per mole of SO2. Here you have the one of oxygen to mole of O per mole of SO2. This is the inputs and the, the oxygen is going to exit in SO2, O2, SO3. So you have two mole of oxygen per mole of SO2, two mole of oxygen per mole of O2, and three mole of oxygen per mole of SO3. So you just input this 150 that you already know from the initial situation, the 100, you already know from uh, previous information that this guy was 45, and from the balance of sulfur, you obtain that this one was 05, 105. So you can actually solve for the amount of final moles of O2, yielding to the 47.5 moles that you already have. Just you have this times this is 300 plus 200 is going to be 500 minus 90 minus uh, 3 times 105, right? which is 315 over two, you have to divide over this guy, and then you will get the 47.5 moles of O2. And you can do the balance for nitrogen, but nitrogen is very easy because whatever enters has to go out. So this is yields to the 376 that we already know. So these are the two methods that we can use in order to do these balances for the, um, for the systems which have reactions in a single reaction. Later on, we're going to be talking about multiple reactions. So thank you very much.